In this video, I'll be comparing the brand new Google Firebase Studio and Lovable side by side. Google finally released their AI coding platform and everybody's talking about it. Well, in this video, I'm going to put it to the test and see what it could do compared to its competitors. We're going to see which of these platforms allows non-technical people to build the best web applications all with zero code. All right, let's do it. All right, guys. So I have a side by side comparison here. On the left hand side, I have Firebase Studio by Google. This just released. And on the right hand side, I have Lovable.dev, which you have have seen me cover on this channel. So the question is, which of these platforms can make a better application as a non-technical person? And I'm going to break that down exactly in this video. We're going to build the same app with the same prompt. So let's go ahead and get started. Here is the prompt that I'm going to be giving each of our applications. So let's build an app that allows users to input information to get the best credit card for them based on their specifications. We're going to implement information about real credit cards, and we want this to be an interactive app where they fill out forms and then get specialized recommendations for the cards they should be using based on their preferences, amount of money they make, etc. So this is a prompt we're going to be using. As you can see, I put this on both of these applications. So what we're going to first of all see is with inside of Google Firebase Studio, we could start coding our app, but we could choose any of these coding frameworks that we want to add. You know, I am not a coder. I don't know necessarily the difference between Next.js and Angular or Flutter. I don't know the difference. So again, this is going to be a review coming from somebody with a non-technical background to see what you could build. So I'm going to click prototype with AI. I'm not going to touch on the specifics there. And with lovable, we just get the option to do that. So it's now going to begin spinning up our preview for both of these different applications. So it'll be interesting to see which is quicker at giving the initial output here. So it looks like on the left-hand side, Firebase Studio is asking for confirmation on some things and lovable already went ahead and started configuring this. So it's giving me the features. So we have data input form, recommendation, recommendation engine, card recommendation display, and then we have the colors, the layout, all this stuff. So let's just click yes, prototype this app, and then see what this looks like here. So you can see Firebase Studio on the left-hand side is beginning to code all this out. It looks, it just looks a little clunky. Let me just say that. Like it, it doesn't work smoothly where lovable, it's just like pleasing to the eye watching it actually do its thing. So this is my first initial impression when comparing these two platforms. All right. So we got our first user interface output from Firebase Studio. This is what we got on the left-hand side. Let's give it a second and wait until Lovable gives us our output and then let's compare the two. All right, so here's the initial output that each of these gave us. You can see on the left-hand side, we have this very, very basic like form application that Firebase Studio created us. On the right-hand side, Lovable built us out a full landing page that actually looks pretty solid. This is our first initial prompt too, so we need to keep that in mind, but let's just take a look at this. You can see, find your perfect credit card match. It even has like a little user interface element of a credit card here here called Credit Card Genius. Our app's called Credit Card Genius, and it's basically telling us how it works. We could get started, and it takes us to this interactive thing here, which let's see if this actually works, which so looks like it does work. And on the left-hand side, look at what we have here from Firebase Studio. It's just, it does not look good. This is the first initial prompt, and let's go ahead and like see if this works. Let's just do something here. Let's just say our income, $50,000. Spending habits. Let's say we like to spend our money on travel. This is very like not great compared to what we're seeing over here. Let's click submit. And okay, this submit button does not work. And let's come over to the right hand side and try out lovable. It's asking us what our credit score is. Okay, so let's just say we have a good credit score. Same thing. Let's say we make $50,000. How many credit cards do you currently have? So it's factoring in a bit more information and context compared to the app on the left-hand side. Click next, takes us here. Spending habits, let's say we spend money on travel, business, and dining. Click next. Okay, guys, this actually looks really, really solid. How often do you travel? Travel frequently, let's click next. And then let's say we want our travel benefits and we want sign up bonuses or something. Get recommendations. Okay, so now we have this profile, shows we have a good credit score. We have $50,000 annual income top spending categories, frequency, and we could update our preferences as well. So this is a first, like first off, this looks great. Let's go back to our prompts and let's begin prompting this to make some changes here. So actually one thing I wanna mention is both of these have some form of editing capability. So I could come here and I could click on this and it allows me to use Excali draw to like circle certain things. Let's just say like I wanted to change the color of that button, but this looks very clunky. Look, when I go to edit this, it just does not look good at all. Like it's all zoomed in, doesn't look great. But on the right hand side, we don't get the same Excali draw option to like actually use a whiteboard to make changes. 
but we can edit our app via this edit feature and we could click on certain parts of the user interface. So if we didn't want this or we wanna change something about it, like say we don't like this text, we could come here and change the text if we would like. So they both have editing capabilities. However, I think the editing capabilities on Lovable is a bit better because Google Firebase Studio just looks very clunky, doesn't work well. All right, so I'm gonna come to this on the left-hand side. I'm gonna come over to Firebase Studio and let's just say, let's make the button functional. I want you to make the button functional so that way when I actually click submit, it actually submits this information. There we go, I'm giving that prompt. Also, what I just used right there is called Aqua Voice. I could just click this command button on my keyboard, speak into my computer, it automatically translates that into text, paste that into the user interface, makes it super easy to actually speak with your computer instead of type, saves me so much time. So there's a little hack for you guys that you guys can add to your AI toolkit. Okay, so made a quick change here. Let's go ahead and test this out again. Click on submit. It says that it's working. However, I do not see the functionality here. That is not working. Let me maybe open this in a separate browser. Maybe that's why it's not working. Yeah, okay, so this just is not working at all. Let's go back to our Firebase app. This still is not working. I could input certain fields, but when I click submit, nothing happens. So let's make our app functional. Beginning to write this code. It is pretty quick at writing this code. It actually uses Gemini 2.5 to write our code, which I believe Lovable still uses Claude to do so. Claude 3.7 on it, I would assume. Okay, I think maybe this works now. Okay, there we go. So it now spits out a card recommendation here. However, it just does not look good. And I wonder if this is actual real card information. So let's come back to Lovable and let's actually get it to recommend a card for us. This looks great. The user interface is awesome. However, I now want you to actually recommend a card based on my specifications that I give when filling out the form. So after I get this functionality working, what we need to do, we need to test out how seamless it is to actually add user authentication. So what this means, this allows for a user to sign up. So for example, inside of our Lovable app, we have our landing page. I want to now make it so that way in order to access this app right here, you need to actually be a user as well as we're gonna add Stripe payments. So you need to be a paying user of our application to actually use it. So I'm gonna test that out for both of these to see how easy it is to implement both user authentication as well as Stripe payments because we wanna be able to charge for our app potentially. That is something with these platforms that we you know, wanna, wanna be able to do. We wanna see which platform is more seamless to be able to do that. That. So we're going to test that out after we get functionality working properly on both these apps. Okay. So lovable on the right-hand side is actually not giving me a recommendation. So I actually don't know if on the left-hand side, Firebase Studio is giving me the correct information. I need to actually ask right here and say, is this real information or mock data? The card recommendations you're giving me, is this real information or is this just like fake data? And then I'm going to come over to lovable and then let's just ask if we need to like add some form of API, like to access like ChatGPT, for example, in order to pull the correct recommendations. I want you to give me actual recommendations. Do we need to add any like AI API key in order for you to pull information? Okay, so it's saying that we don't actually need to add that because inside of this credit card context page, we already have some real credit card data and sophisticated recommendation engines. So it says it's already built out. For the left-hand side, Google Firebase Studio is saying that this is just fake data. We could call an API to get real recommendations. Okay, let's add some form of of like AI API in order to use AI to recommend certain credit cards for us. Okay, so this is what we're seeing on the right-hand side with Lovable. It's actually giving us, it has an amazing looking user interface. This, the user interface just looks pretty terrible and it doesn't pull real credit card information for whatever reason. So we need to add the Google Gemini API key. So Google Gemini is Google's AI model, just like ChatGPT, but it's Google's version essentially. And what we could do is we could just auto-generate an API key, which is actually pretty cool since this integrates directly directly with Google's ecosystem. That's the cool thing about Firebase Studio and the cool potential here is it integrates with all the different applications they have. So something like Google Gemini, it's really easy to just instantly connect our LLM here if we're looking to use AI um, on the back end of our application, as well as like databases. Firebase is Google's like native database essentially. So if we could hook up a database directly inside of Firebase, then that could be pretty great. However, 
I don't usually like using Firebase. I like using Lovable in Bolt. I like using Superbase, which it nat natively integrates. It's just much simpler to use. It's not old and clunky. It's like much more intuitive to use. So that's something we need to keep in mind when we're gonna begin building out our database here. Okay, so it says our API key is updated. Let's go ahead and try this again, see if this is working properly. Okay, so it did give us a recommendation here, Chase Sapphire Reserve, interesting. Okay, so that's real data here. But again, the user interface just does not look good at all. So there's something we need to do now. We need to add user authentication so users could sign up and then we also store our like profile information as well as our credit cards that we want to explore into our account so let's go ahead and do that now i'm going to come to firebase studio and just say let's add user authentication to our app so in order to sign up and use our app they need to be a user and then i'm going to give the exact same prompt over to lovable guys i'm enjoying doing this side by side comparison if you guys want more content like this make sure to subscribe to the channel i cover all things ai for non-techies so if you're not technical I'm going to show you kind of different AI tools and platforms you could use every single day as either a business owner or a just everyday person looking to stay ahead of the curve with AI. And if you guys haven't seen in the past, I've covered plenty of videos talking about Lovable, Bolt, Replit Agent, all these AI coding platforms. So you could build apps with AI, even with zero coding knowledge. All right. Looks like we are getting an error over on the left-hand side with Firebase Studio. So let's click try again. However, it looks like Lovable is seamlessly figuring this out. Oh, actually it looks like we ran into an error here. I spoke slightly too soon. And looks like we ran into another error in Firebase Studio. Let's click fix. I do not know what the hell is going on here. However, it does not look good. And then let's click try to fix with Lovable. It's kind of good that we both we ran into the errors on both platforms at the same time, just to kind of see how they handle specific errors. Okay, so now it looks like we have an updated user interface. We got credit card compass, cool name. Let's sign up. Curious how this flow is gonna work. So it's saying I have two issues. Okay. I don't know what's going on here. All right, and then on the right-hand side, I'm getting an error here because for whatever reason, it's trying to use Clerk, which helps with the user authentication. However, I've never done this before. Usually Supabase just does it. So I'm gonna come here and just say, can we just use Supabase for user authentication? All right, so now it's giving the instructions on how to implement Supabase. Click on the green Supabase button in the top right. Let's click that. Then you come to Supabase and actually create a project. Okay, so now I have this app created. Let's give it a second while it loads. All right, so in order to integrate our app here, I'm gonna click on credit card app which is the project I just created. I'm gonna click connect. Okay, great, that should be working. I'm gonna go back to project now. And then it says our app is now connected to Supabase. So we can add user accounts and login, store and use real data, use advanced features like edge functions. Getting another error here, so let's troubleshoot this error. Okay, this is because it was trying to use Clerk for authentication, which we're not gonna be using anymore because we're using Supabase, so that makes sense as an error. However, on the left-hand side with um, Firebase Studio, I have no clue what's going on here, honestly. So let's try to sign up. Our app is not working. Working. When I click the sign up button, it does not allow me to sign up or anything. Okay, left hand side, Firebase Studio is nothing but errors. Lovable on the right hand side, we have an amazing looking landing page. We have a functioning application that looks amazing. So now, it's saying that our user authentication should be working now. So let's click get started. Okay, this makes sense. It's asking me to sign up. First name, email, password. Let's sign up. Okay, it says that we have successfully signed up. However, let's come to our app here. Looks like the login is not working exactly how we need it. So I need to make a change here. When a new user signs up, I don't want you to send them a link to confirm via email. I just want them to be able to sign up directly to the app. So what this is gonna do now is this is gonna then change the rules inside of our Supabase account. So it's gonna come to SQ SQL Editor. What this will do is this will basically write out certain rules in order for our database to follow. So now it should then update this table, hopefully with like users. Let's give it a second and see if it actually does that uh, it looks like we need to actually change something manually in here so all right so this is now working i was actually able to sign into an account or sign up for an account and it then stores this information here again superbase is our database this is where we allow users to sign up and we could even store kind of information to their account such as like this profile information here once we actually get the credit card specifications so let's go ahead let's then add something here let's say i want you to now add i want you to now save any information to a user profile profile when they actually get their specific card information. So once they fill out the form and everything, I want you to save this information to their user profile. Okay, we're making progress here with our Lovable app. However, on the left-hand side, Firebase Studio, I have no clue what's going on. I, it, it is just not working. Like click sign up, there's three issues here. I mean, I, I don't know what to do. Firebase API is key is missing. So we need to add some Firebase API. Can you help me fix these errors? So the thing is 
with level one, I'm able to just like ask it to help me fix the errors and it usually fixes it. I have no clue what to do in Firebase Studio as a non-technical person, if I'm being completely honest. And then going back to level one on the right hand side, you can see it's now adding all this information. This is basically in order to um, set up profile tables inside of Superbase so we could store information to user accounts. Let's click apply. Okay, so this is where we're at with, with our level app. So we could actually go ahead and we can fill out our specifications, gives us our recommendations here, and then we could save our profile. So what this does is this automatically stores this information in a database inside of Superbase. So we could always have this information whenever we log into our account because that is what Superbase does. It ties us to our user profile using a database. What I could do now, let's just say once the user fills out the questionnaire, let's just show them the page that you're on now instead of having to fill it out again. I want them to just fill it out once and be done with it unless they want to go back and change it. Okay, unfortunately, this is what we're looking at. We don't see like we don't we have a fully functioning application on the right hand side. Basically, I'm going to make a couple more changes with lovable on the left hand side. Firebase Studio. I can't get the app to work. Maybe I'm going to take a like I'm going to play around with this a bit, see if I can make some changes. But I mean, I can't even get these buttons to work. So not to mention when it was working slightly, like the user interface was absolutely terrible. So take this into consideration when you're choosing which platform to use lovable, non-technical, super easy to use. I built something pretty cool in a matter of like 30 minutes or something, if that. So let me keep playing around with this. I'm going to show you the final product here in a second, but this is my initial kind of consensus after using both these platforms literally side by side. All right. Here's where we have got with our Lovable app. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and open a new preview. So this is like what our app looks like. We have our landing page, this looks great. We have our credit card genius. We can click on get started. Actually, I need to come to a incognito browser to try this for the first time. All right, so I'm trying this in a new browser. I'm gonna click here. We have our landing page, click on get started. We can sign up for an account. Let's just do something random, rock test, testing. All right, so we could sign up for an account. What we then do is we could fill out out our questionnaire in order to figure this out. So let's just try a different, like different information here than we did previously. So let's say our credit card is poor. We make $25,000 per year. We have one credit card. Let's say that we spend most of our stuff on groceries, online shopping, and gas. Next, we hardly ever travel. We want to get cash back rewards. So we're now going to get recommendations. So it, it gives us the correct credit card because it's not recommending the same one as the other one where I have a good credit score. I like to travel, all that stuff. So this is working. We could click on, or first of all, we could save our profile. So this will save it to our database that we connected. We could click on our details. You could see this discover it secured. It tells us all the information. This is our required credit score. It could be poor to fair. Here's our interest rate. Here's our intro APR, key benefits, all this stuff. We could compare it with other cards or, and one thing I wanna mention is I could refresh this and this information will stay here because I added the ability to save this to our profile inside of Superbase. So that is our app right here is working properly. It's fully functioning. And our app on the left hand side, guys, I've been trying to make fixes to this. I literally cannot get it to work. So there we have it. That right there is the test. Google Firebase Studio versus lovable.dev. Lovable.dev blew it out of the water. A lot of people are saying that Firebase Studio is crazy. You guys should try it. It's, it's gonna be a game changer. It's not. I mean, I'm just going to say as a non-technical person, it's not good. There are so many other better platforms out there between Bolt, Lovable, all these other ones. So maybe it will be good over time because it integrates with all their applications and it would be awesome to seamlessly like build an app built into their entire ecosystem as far as Google, but it's just not there yet. So if you guys are non-technical, don't even try it right now. I don't think it's good, but um, if you guys got some value from this, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, cover all things AI for non-techies, showing you what you can use as a day-to-day -day person in your business or your everyday life. So hope you guys got some value. See you guys in the next one.